Now, expanding on L2 and L1 regularization, we saw that L2 regularization adds a term to the loss function. And we also saw that L2 regularization as the square of the weights, L2, that's why the, word, the number 2 is after L in this regularization, because it adds the square of the weights to the loss function. So essentially, the term that we add is the sum of squares of weights. And this is just a small procedure to compute that. And you can see it's very simple. You're just going to add for each weight, you're going to compute weights of i times weights of i. And if you have all the weights stored in this variable weights, the ith weight corresponding to the ith feature is given by weights at position i. And you're going to compute the square and add it and store it in some squared wells. So some squared wells stores the sum of these weight squares and that is your L2 penalty term. So this value that you finally compute after this for loop ends, what you compute is going to be the penalty added to your loss function. For L1, we saw that the weight's absolute value of the weight is added to the loss function. And again, the simple procedure computes it. Some abs vals is the penalty. Finally, after the for loop ends, this will give you the penalty, the L1 penalty. And here you use the absolute value of each of the weights. Weights is the entire weight vector. And the ith weight value corresponding to the ith feature is given by weights at index i. Now, let's understand how these two regularizations are different. To do that, let's first plot them in an axis. Now, let's say we have two features, theta 0 and theta 1 are two features, and we are plotting both the loss term and the regularization term. So we know that the regularization term is given by theta 0 square plus theta 1 square, right? And we want it to bound it by some value, right? So we want to say that this value, penalty term, let's say is less than or equal to A. So we only want to add a penalty that is less than a. We want to quantify the penalty. We cannot have an infinite penalty, right? So we want to say the penalty, the total penalty is less than or equal to a. Now this is bounded by a circle equation of theta 0 square plus theta 1 square is equal to a, right? And this circle equation, if you plot it where the x-axis is theta 1 and y-axis is theta 0, that is corresponds to this red circle here. And now our goal is to minimize regularization and minimize the loss term. So the loss term, if you remember, is again y minus h of x the whole square where h of x is the hypothesis and that hypothesis 
again is a function of your parameters which is theta 1 and theta 0 right and that is again another circle equation because this you have a square here right so it's also a function of theta 0 and theta 1 square right and that is given by this blue circle here and let's say when you minimize this completely with zero error it will correspond to this dot but obviously zero error on training data does not mean that's a great model we already know that because it is overfit the training data and may not be optimal on test data so it may not generalize well so which which means that we are going to relax this error so this error if we relax then depending on the amount we relax we get all these other circles where error greater than zero and as you grow out this circle has the maximum error that you would like to allow again you want to allow only so much error such that your model predicts better on the test data set so that is when the regularization terms term comes in so you want essentially a solution that intersects your error term which is this this circle and your regularization circle so both these circles intersect here and this is now a solution that you're going to report which minimizes a combination of your loss and regularization now you can see very well how the introduction of regularization has made the error greater than zero it has pushed your model to not minimize the loss completely on the training data set but allow for some error which is exactly what you want to do you want to allow some error on training data set so that it does not overfit the training data and can generalize better to test data set now let's look at the next regularization that is l1 so in L1, we know we take the mod of the features. So the, this square that we get is by using the mod. Mod theta 0 plus theta 1 less than or equal to A, where A is our maximum allowable penalty. So we want to allow penalty up to A. And that is going to result in a corresponding increase in error in our loss term, right? Similar to what we observed for L2 regularization. And this translates to theta 0 plus theta 1 less than or equal to A, which is if theta 0 and theta 1 are greater than 0, which is this line. This line and if theta 0 is less than 0 which is minus theta 0 if you have less than 0 which is this side now then you have minus theta 0 plus theta 1 here and that corresponds to this line Similarly, if you have minus theta 1 and a positive theta 0, you get this line and both are negative, then you get this line. So that is basically this equation, modulus of theta 0 plus theta 1 less than or equal to A, where theta 0 and theta 1 can take both positive and negative values. So that's how you get this rectangle, sorry, the square here. And now... There is something very different happening here when compared to L2 regularization. 
you can notice that both have the same loss term. That's, that's the same, right? Now, this loss term, the, the circle for the loss term, and our regularization lines, they intersect here on an axis. Whereas here, it's only possible for them to intersect outside the axis. That is because it is possible for the data term or the loss term to intersect our L1 regularization in the axis because it does not require the zero error, the center of this loss term, the circle corresponding to the loss term, the center of the circle. It does not require this circle center to be on an axis for it to intersect on an axis. But because these two both are circles and they here for it to intersect here, let's say the only way that these two circles will intersect here is when this center occurs on the axis. The only way for these two circles to intersect on the axis is when the center of the loss term occurs on the axis. Now what does it mean when the center of the loss term or the zero error of the loss term occurs on the axis? It means that the other feature, theta 1, is 0 when the error is 0. So think about it. When theta 1 is 0, theta 1 is the parameter corresponding to the feature 1, right? If theta 1 is 0, when your error is minimized, when the error is 0, which means that theta 1 is not contributing to minimizing the error. So this feature that, that is associated with theta 1, so your equation would be theta 0 plus theta 1 x1, right? And theta 1 x1, if x1 is not contributing at all, that's when this center, circle center, could go on this axis, right? Because in the, on this axis, all the values have theta 1 equal to 0. And that hardly ever happens because if the feature does not matter at all to our prediction, then what's the point of using regularization? Regularization is to prevent high weights, prevent overemphasizing a particular feature in a prediction. If that feature's value is zero, then regularization is not going to help. And it hardly ever happens that you minimize the error and you see that a particular feature's value is learned to be zero. And if, so if it is zero, then regularization does not help. If it is not zero, then it will not intersect on the axis, which means that feature value, that feature will be deemed important. So this is one big difference between L1 and L2. In L1, it is possible for our loss term and the regularization to intersect on the axis. In L2, it is hardly ever possible that the loss term and the regularization term will intersect in the axis. So now you will ask me, why is it important that they intersect in the axis? Why is it, is it desirable or should we even think about it? Now, if it's intersecting in the axis, it means that the feature, some feature value is zero. And why would that be interesting? Because there is something called feature selection in ML. 
you want to limit the features that are not important to the problem. You want to filter them out. And L1, in addition to being useful for regularization, can also help you weed out this, these features which are not helpful. And that's what it does here when it is intersecting on the axis. It is turning off this feature. Theta 1 is now turned off. It's not, it's not part of your optimized regularized estimate. Some theta i may be 0. And rather than keep around all features with some features which may not contribute to your prediction problem, you want to turn off those which are not truly affecting your prediction problem. And that is when L1 becomes more desirable. Now, it's not true that L1 is always desirable. So let's just recap what L1 is and how that's desirable. L1 regularization can sometimes have a beneficial side effect of driving one or more weight values to zero which effectively means the associated feature is not used. It's not used in the final prediction problem. It's good when you have lots of features, when you don't know which feature is contributing, and you want to definitely weed out features which are not helpful. L1 regularization is the one that you use. But L1 regularization also comes with one big downside. Oftentimes, we solve optimization, all these loss functions are solved by computing a gradient. We saw that in gradient descent, right? For logistic regression, we use gradient uh, to solve the solve for the weights. And this is a standard practice. We differentiate it, set it equal to zero, solve for it, and then we find the parameter values. L1 regularization is a modulus function. A modulus is not differentiable at certain points and that makes it less desirable to be combined with many loss functions. So keep that in mind when you are designing the loss function or choosing the regularization. L2 is differentiable so it is definitely advantageous that way. It can be added to many loss functions and many different optimization techniques can use L2 uh, seamlessly. But if you're using L1 you have to resort to other ways in which you can optimize because L1 is not differentiable. But L1 can give you a side benefit of driving some features, some especially unwanted features, to zero and excluding them and can be used for feature selection. So this is a question that usually all comes up in job interviews. Which regularization can be used for feature selection? The answer would be L1 regularization.